Alright, what we're going to do next is, uh, I'm going to show you, and you guys can all come over here. Am I good wearing this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, it doesn't stick, but how, how tall are you? Six one. Okay. And a half. I'm like right at six two. Uh, yeah, you'll be, if you clean up, you might hit your head a little bit. Okay. Okay, so again, 75 year old airplane, it's single engine. There's always the opportunity for something to happen in the uh, this big Rolls Royce Merlin engine. Um, if that was to happen, around here there's a lot of runways, a lot of a lot of other airports. If he couldn't, then more likely he'd just land on one of those because where we're working out down there is a couple of nice big runways. This thing has really good glide range. Um, but if not, he's going to find the softest spot he can find. Um, and around here is probably going to be a cornfield. You don't land in a yeah. bean field, you land in a cornfield. Um, and you would land, if it's off airport or not on a road or a really hard service that we know about, it's going to be landed with the gear up. And the reason why is the landing with the gear up, it'll skid, may turn sideways or whatever, but it's not going to flip over. If you land Go. with the gear down, in a, especially in a bean field, it's going to end up on its top and you're stuck. Right. Go. So that's, that's what you don't want to do. Um, so, but having said all that, <clears throat> something happens, he puts it down. Maybe he's unconscious or whatever. You know, you can't open the cockpit or the, the canopy. So this is where we're going. The, the red handle there that says emergency pole. Yeah. All right, that is a release for this canopy. So what you would do in that event, once once the airplane stopped moving, take your headsets off, your harness, leave your parachute on, um, but your harness is just one lever, and I'll show you that when you get in. You pop it, and it releases the, the five attachments, and you can just pull that handle. As you hold the handle in the up position, just stand up, the canopy will hit about right here, and lift up. As soon as it starts to lift, you can let go of the handle, and then just grab the canopy and throw it off to the side, and step up, and get out whichever way you can, try and help Pete get out uh, of the airplane. Um, does that make sense? Sure does. Okay, all right. So, second thing would be, which is even more unlikely than an engine failure, would be something that would require us to bail out of the airplane. An engine failure is not uh, an emergency enough that we'd ever bail out of the airplane, unless it was some sort of catastrophic deal where it was on fire and you couldn't put the fire out, right? So if it was on fire or we had a structural failure of the airplane, are the only two reasons we're going we're gonna to leave the airplane. In the event that we were going to leave the airplane, it, it'll be discussed. It's not just all of a sudden, hey, you're on your own. You know, he's, <laughs> he's going to tell you, hey, we're, we've got to get out of the airplane. The three words you're looking for is bail out, bail out, bail out. When you hear that being called, when he releases this canopy to go, it comes straight back and up and over. So you have to get your head, especially your height, you got to get your head out of the way. So you would uh, unbuckle your harness, take off your headsets, grab this handle that's right here, and just duck down. Okay. You know, so he's saying, hey, we're going to bail out of the airplane. Unbuckle, lean down, and say bail out, bail out, bail out. Whew. Canopy's gone. Now it's all wind noise. You won't be. There'll be no talking. 
um, because you won't be able to hear anything being said because even with this canopy cracked this far, it, it creates so much noise, you, you, can't, you can't talk there, so yeah. let alone the canopy being gone. So at that time, it's easy to get basically get out of the airplane, but you're, you're in the air. So uh, depending on the nature of the emergency, you may just roll it upside down and throw you out. Uh, but more than likely, you're going to have to bail out of the airplane. So <clears throat> you hear the bailout, 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 boom, canopy's gone. You're unbuckled, you're leaning, you know, you're already leaning forward, you can sit up now. He'll be gone by that time, right? Because it's gonna be, yeah, that would be a pretty quick deal. Because the way the slipstream comes around the side of the airplane, comes up and over this way. And so it has the tendency to try and keep you in the airplane. So getting out to this side is almost impossible. Go so to the right. you go out, so see the gun ports on the nose yeah. or on the front of the wing? That's your aiming point. You're going to dive to the guns. And the reason why you're going that way to try and hit the wing is so you go between the tail. This, you're trying to get in that space there that window. without hitting without hitting the tail. Yeah. So if you just unbuckle to just jump in the air, you're going to hit the tail for sure. And you're either going to break your legs, break your back. You know, it's going to be bad. You're still going to pull it down to the parachute, but you don't want to do that. So it's coming out, going straight to the front, and then you're gone. Your parachute's got a tether. That tether automatically deploys the chute. Um, I'm going to show you when you put it on. There's the D handle, like you see in all the movies. Have you ever jumped before? No. Okay. Like I said, yes, yeah, I already asked you that. Today's not. Okay. <laughs> but, um, if you was to realize you're falling, it means that tether didn't work. You grab the D ring, and you pull straight away. Right. And then all that does is pull this little cotter pin behind the chute that releases this big spring that throws the drogue chute out that pulls the parachute out. So, uh, do you have any questions? So, last thing I need to tell you, you'll have this Bose headset that I'll give you. You'll put it on. The boom's got to be right, right up next to your lips and cog. And so, right, right here, it's still the switch. Yeah. That is how you talk to Pete. <clears throat> so, you got your headsets on, the airplane's running, you got the boom here. You push that switch with your right hand, say what you want to say, let go. You hear, you'll always be able to hear, but you cannot talk to him unless you push the switch down. Okay. Push it, just like a walkie-talkie. Push it, say what you want to say, let off of it. All right? Cool. Got it? Easy peasy. Okay. All right. So, uh, put your back to me. Hold on with your left hand there and give me your right arm. It's just Velcroed in there. That's a piece of Velcro there. So it's, I mean, if you actually had to pull it, you'll have no problem getting it. Okay. I have no doubt. Uh, this is coming up through. One of our guys uh, makes the, always makes the comment that uh, in the German accent that make sure your furniture's in the center of the room, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so when we pull it tight, if it's not, you'll know why. These don't have to be super tight, but they need, they need to not be floppy on it. So. I'll let you tighten it to what feels tight but not cutting off circulation to your leg. It'll be a little looser when you sit. Yeah. Okay. A little bit here. Alright. My man, I think you're ready. If, I, if You tell me if you're ready and I will. Okay, so when we get in the, uh, when we get in the cockpit, what we're going to do is don't grab the seat. Grab here and here. Swing your right leg over. You're plenty tall, just on the deck. Put your left foot in, face forward. Grab on the sides here like this and just kind of sit on the edge of the seat. Then pick your butt up and put your butt all the way to the back of the seat. Gotcha. All right? Yeah. Man, for the older short guys, getting over top of this is super hard. Just don't grab the seat. Ah. I forgot already. Yeah, well, everybody does because it's right in front. Right? So, do me a favor, lean. Yeah. Is your is your butt touching the back of your thigh? Yeah. Yes. All right, lean forward, Tim. I need to put the hook, find the tether and hook it up. All right, found it. Hook it. You can lean back now. Come around with the shoulder harness. I'm now part of this aircraft. You will be here in a second. Hey, yeah. Yes. That is a. All right. That is a thing from the. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think which fighter group, which was the gunfighters, and that was their, their, 
taxi out. So. More than one of these? Yeah, instead of, yeah, that was before that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so see how that goes? Yep. If you ever need to go, just boop, pop it. Okay, then we'll tighten these things down. There again, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be super tight, but you can't be just moving, flopping around. Yeah. The only thing I don't want to do is negative Gs. Yeah, that's good. I, I doubt Pete does either. He's an F-16 guy, so you never know. Yeah. He may, where'd, you, where'd you fly? Uh, I'm a civilian guy, actually, oh, all, all the way around, yeah. I got to fly up a lot of the different World War II airplanes, but other than that, civilian. Um, two things I need to show you real quick. There's, this is your headset. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. So it should be on, it's noise canceling. So when you, you don't have to put them on just yet, but once he's in there, cause he'll talk to you a little bit, yeah. but then put them on, but just make sure that boom gets right up to your lip. Yep. Okay. Remember silver buttons, how you talk. All right, down, down talk. Yep. And then don't put your feet right here till, uh, cause he'll put the seat down. And if your feet are up there, he'll squish it. All right. So, all right, you're now locked in. All right, Pete. Oh, what'd I do? Oh, it's just headset. that's it. Sorry, I'm not a small guy. Call sign doctor. Call sign doctor. Oh, where's your phone? My phone's in my pocket. Can you get it? Uh, yeah. Well, maybe. Oh, okay. If you don't want it, that's what I I made the mistake of not asking for that before we set in there. You want me to undo it so you can get get it out? No. Nah. Come on. Okay. Ah. All right. Perfect. All right. Here, smile at me. Okay. Thank you so much. You, you want back. this? No. I, oh. I was just, if you wanted to get it while you're flying, you'll never uh, be able to get it. And I'm supposed to ask you that before we get you belted in. It's all right. You're up, sport. Okay. Fine, fine. Oh, if you have, if I have. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, Dave. All right. Yes, All sir. Right, uh, tell you what, we're going to plan on doing is uh, kind of like a World War II mission. So we're going to go out, kind of drive out out to the southwest here a little bit. Just take a look around, kind of sightsee a little bit for a couple of minutes. And then uh, once we get down south, we're going to climb up to about 5,000 feet. Do a little maneuvering, so kind of a climbing, descending 180 degree turn called Lazy 8s. Alright. Uh, so we'll do a couple Lazy 8s, and then if you're good with that, we will um, we'll do like kind of a more rapid roll in, put about 3 to 4 Gs on. Um, just kind of show you a little bit of what the airplane can do. Uh, and, and this is all, I mean, if you're not feeling good after Lazy 8s or anything like that, don't worry about it. This is this is your ride. We're okay. not out to impress you or get you sick or do anything, be macho or anything like that. So anytime you're not feeling good or anything like that, just let me know. Okay. So it's nice and smooth. It's cool up there. We get a lot of air through the airplane once we're flying. So it's, it's a real comfortable day to go flying today. Um, and then after that, feeling good, having fun. Um, a lot of times, um, even during World War II, once they were done escorting the bombers, uh, they were cleared to find targets of opportunity on the way to the ground for ground stuff. And in Korea, it was, a, it was a ground attack airplane, almost exclusively. So we'll find a target, kind of roll in, do a little simulated uh, weapons delivery pass. We're all good. And we'll kind of come on back in. We'll do a pitch out and land. And uh, that's about it. It should be a great time. So awesome. Once again, once we're up in the air and all that kind of stuff, uh, power's back, can hear each other, um, ask questions, all that kind of stuff. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stow the hat. I'm going to drop my seat here real quick. Just watch the toes. There we go. And then we'll let this business jet get behind us and crank up and go.
looks like it. I'm not doing anything until you tell me to. You know what? If you want to take the uh, the green belt and then yep. undo the green belt. All right. And then we'll, uh, we'll plan on getting you out of the chute in the seat there. It makes life much, much easier. It is hard for me to squeeze past that canopy. Yeah. That was a hell of a ride. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming out. Thank your wife. Yeah. For coming out. I wanted to do it. I was like, there's no way I can pay that kind of money for that shorter ride. <laughs> yeah. Sure it sure. never gets cheaper. Yeah, I, I know. And it's just cool. I uh, retired out of the Air Force Reserve. And we were taking a, a trip over to England to see a, a couple friends of ours that were in the Air Force as well. And uh, I, I bought myself, the only Warbird, bought it, or Warbird ride I've ever bought was a Spitfire ride. And it was worth every penny. <laughs> So I'll, I'll take that, and we're going to kind of put it down here inside, and then what we're going to do is just kind of get rid of these to the side, and then we'll just kind of unclip you. There we go. Unclip you that one. I'll get this. That's the easy one, so I'll yeah. get it. I'll take your phone. All right. And then uh, you just kind of want to, yeah, weasel out of that. Right. Not the seat, right? Yeah, not the seat. Anything to the seat. It's like a genuine World War II air conditioning when you get out of that. It is. It's hot in there. It is. Yeah, on the ground it gets toasty. Here it's fairly comfortable. The easiest way down is actually sit on the, the uh, not too good here and slide on. Gunfighter. Alright. Let's get rid of this. 